Alright guys, this is my third attempt at making this video today, and I do not have the lung capacity for it. So, whatever happens on this take, that's what you're going to get. We're going to pretend I'm in class. Here we go, finishing section 1.4. Uh, we'll talk about 1.5 tomorrow. I just don't see that happening today. I still have another class I need to uh, do this for, so I'm really sorry I couldn't be there. Uh, watch your email slash announcements on Blackboard for tomorrow's class. We'll see how it goes today. All right, so um, this is, I started a new one, so I'd have a new one posted here. But this is the exact same thing, the end of the lecture that we started yesterday in class. Uh, finishing section 1.4, I put up the intermediate value theorem here because that's what all of these problems, uh, starting at number 10, deal with. So if a function f is continuous on the closed interval from a to b with f of a not equal to f of b so the endpoints have different heights and k is any number such that k is between f of a and f of b then there is at least one number c in a b such that f of c equals k and i'm still a child in my mind so f of c equals k also makes me giggle okay so what, what's really going on here, and I drew a couple of pictures because you know, I wanted to, wanted to have a, a couple of options. I don't want you to get locked into uh, which is less and which is more. But really, we have three things going on here. We have one, first of all, f is continuous on the closed interval from A to B. All right, so that, that's our setup. Our second thing is that the endpoints cannot have the same height. There has to be something between them. So here on my graph, I've drawn f of a lower and f of b higher, and on the second one, I reverse the order because the order doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if this function's increasing or decreasing, just that the endpoints can't be the same value. And then what we need is k is between f of a and f of b. Now if all of this is true, then we're guaranteed that whatever that k value is that's between f of a and f of b, we know there's going to be some c value. Now this only proves existence uh, we cannot always find that c but we know it exists. And if you're a, a theoretical mathematician, that's okay. You're like, hey, it's there. That's all I need to know. If you're an applied mathematician, you want to know, okay, but where is it? All right, that's the difference between what type of mathematician are you? Like, all right, that's cool. I can accept it. It's there. Or, <laughs> no, where? Just tell me where. And, uh, a lot of math uh, disagreements have come from existence versus how to find it. Um, math disagreements, they're not like cool like uh, mixed martial arts or anything, but um, they amuse me. Okay, so in order to explain why the function has at least one zero in the given interval, we're going to look at these three items. So we're going to look at continuity on the interval, then we're going to discuss the values of the endpoints, and then we're going to see if 0, right, 1, 0, we're going to see if the k value of 0 is between f of a and f of b. Okay, so, first step. Uh, f is continuous on the interval from 0 to pi because we know that polynomials are continuous. on their entire domain and because we know that sine of x and cosine of x are continuous on their domains all right and all real numbers in their domains so we know that the function is continuous fantastic uh second step we need to find f of a f of a in this case is f of zero which is 0 squared minus 5 minus cosine of 0 
which is 0 minus 5 minus, oops, let's throw this up here, my general cosine graph uh, with really bad scales. My general cosine graph is uh, starts at 1, right down here at pi, it goes down to negative 1. So cosine of 0 is 1, which is negative 6. So f of 0 equals negative 6, whereas f of b, which is our f of pi value, is pi squared minus 5 minus cosine of pi, which is pi squared minus 5 minus a negative 1, which is pi squared minus 4. <coughs> now, I know that this is greater than 0. All I know is it's positive. I don't really care what number it is. And we could check here. Uh, come on, turn it on. There we go. So pi squared minus 5 minus a negative 1 is 5.86 something. All right. call that 5.87 so they're definitely not the same now I claim this is all I care about I don't actually need to know the exact value and here's why here's here's what I'm thinking here I know pi is bigger than 3 3 squared is 9 so pi squared has to be bigger than 9 9 minus 4 is 5 something so I know that this is bigger than 0 it's positive uh, so I could even write here, um, even if I just write f of pi equals pi squared minus 4 for the exact value, I know that k equals 0 is between negative 6 and pi squared minus 4. If you need the decimal to, to see that, that's fine. But we don't actually care about the, the actual value. So at least one zero exists because... Uh, no, this is not a polynomial. Once we have a cosine involved, it's not a polynomial. Uh, f of x is continuous and f of zero is less than zero. Correct while f of pi is less than zero no it's greater than zero so that's the problem at least one zero exists because f of x is continuous yes f of zero is greater than zero no so i'm not even looking at the rest at least one zero exists because f of x is not continuous no that can't be it now i'm guessing it's this last one but let's see at least one zero exists because f of x is continuous f of 0 is less than 0, f of pi is greater than 0, this is our answer. Now remember, mine has that red 5. Yours won't show the number in red, but that's going to make a difference. All right, So make sure you test yours. Don't just go with my answer. Once you do the work, these are easy to check off. All right, uh, next problem. Let's bring this bad boy up here. Verify. Oh, and it didn't ask us to find C because oh, it's hard in that one. Uh, check this one out. Verify that the intermediate value theorem applies. And then find the value of C. All right, so let's verify. Uh, let me get this out of our way. Scroll. There we go. Uh, verify. So first, F is a polynomial. So it's continuous. Uh, second thing, f of 0 equals, when I put 0 in for x, I get 2. And f of 5, right, a equals 0, b equals 5, k equals 23. f of 5 is 5 squared plus 4 times 5 plus 2, 
Uh, let's just finish that right here. That's 25 plus 20 makes 45 plus 2 makes 47. Uh, yes, 2 and 47 capture our k value of 23. So we know IVT applies. All right, so these are not the same value, but the k value is in between, so that's all good. Now to find that value, I want to find f of c equals 23. So if I take this little statement right here, now I'm going to put f of c over here. That's c squared plus 4c plus 2 equals 23. <coughs> In order to solve this, uh, in order to solve any quadratic, I am going to subtract and get this equal to zero. All right, I'll get my quadratics equal to zero. I have c squared plus 4c minus 21 equals zero. The things that multiply together to give me 21 or 7 and 3. I want it to be a negative 21, so one of them is positive and one of them is negative. And since this 4, when we add them together, is positive, that 7 must be the positive one. We end up with c minus 3 equals 0, so c equals 3. And c plus 7 equals 0, so c equals negative 7. Now, you might be asking yourself, do I put both of them? What do I do? Um, we're going to ignore this one, and this is why. Uh, this is our only answer in the given interval. All right, so negative 7 is not between 0 and 5, so we don't care about it. Our answer is just the 3. All right, that's the C value that we can find. I'm going to hit save so I don't lose this. Just like if we were in class right now. Um, all right, let's do another one. Do I have enough room here? All right, this is the last one. This is only two pages. I think I should put this on another page just so we have plenty of room. All right, here we go. Find all values of C such that f is continuous on the entire real number line. And we talked about this yesterday, and I actually referred to this problem as we were talking yesterday. Uh, we know that polynomials are continuous on their domains. So each piece is continuous. <clears throat> Our only issue with any piecewise defined function is at c. So I am going to make sure I can write that. Only possible issue is at x equals c. All right, so find all values of c such that we are continuous. Okay, so here's what I want to, be, to do. In order to be continuous, I know that the limit from the right must equal the limit from the left in order for the limit to exist. And I know that these have to be the value of f of c. That's really what continuity says. There's three conditions. Uh, the limit from the right must equal the limit from the left. Uh, that makes the limit exist. Uh, the function must be defined there. And that function must equal the limit. So continuity can be summed up with this little three-part equation. So what I'm going to do is each one of these. The limit as x approaches c from the right. From the right, remember, are greater values than c because they're on the right of our number line. So the limit as x approaches c from the right of x, I would use the bottom part, equals c. The limit as x approaches c from the left, all right, c from the left will be left of less than, so I'll use this top piece, uh, piece, piece portion 
And in order to evaluate a limit, all I do is substitute. Remember that little negative or that little positive? That's just telling me from the right and from the left. There's no negatives going on here. It's just right and left. Uh, this will be 4 minus c squared. Now I happen to know because of this or equal to, I happen to know that uh, f of c is also equal to 4 minus c squared. All right, so I can find all three parts of this. But what we really care about, what we, can, what we can do with this quite easily, is just set these two equal to each other, right? That limit from the right is equal to the limit from the left, so it must be that c equals 4 minus c squared. It's a quadratic. Let's get everything equal to 0. So I'm going to add c squared, subtract 4. Now I'm going to not use... Uh, decimals or factoring, I'm going to, oh my goodness, uh, one, two, let's call this three, I'm going to another page, oh, it's not another page, yay, I'm going to use a quadratic formula, negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus four times a times c all over two times a. And when we simplify, we get negative 1 plus or minus uh, negative 4 times 1, still at negative 4, times negative 4. So uh, that's a positive 16 plus 1 makes a positive 17 all over 2. That's ugly. Uh, so C equals negative 1 minus the square root of 17 all over 2. And C equals negative 1 plus the square root of 17 all over 2. And we want this continuous on the entire real number line. So those happen to be the values that make the input equal to the output. Isn't that interesting? I got nothing. Um, the only thing I've got actually is I really want to check these values and I don't blame you at all if you want to check them. So I am going to attempt to do this without, oh, yay. Yeah, I'm still here. Um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to see if I can input this answer and make sure it's right for you guys. I got lucky and had the homework up still. Videos with silence are a lot worse than class with silence because, you know, I don't know. I just assume so. There we go. So I happen to know, right, when I subtract, that's going to be a smaller value. So I'm going to do negative 1 minus the square root of 17 all over 2. And then I'm going to be lazy. I'm going to copy that. And I'm going to put in a plus sign here. And that's going to be my larger value, so I don't have to type it again. Uh, fingers crossed, the problem is the same as I was doing on my paper. Yes. Remember, it doesn't tell you how to round, so you don't round. Fantastic. Now, uh, let's see what else. Let's just make sure I got a couple of other answers right. Let's put in C equals 3 for 12, and that bottom one for 10. 3 and the bottom one, and I'm going to submit. It didn't like that. Oh because that was number 11 and not number 10. My goodness, I tried to be like all stealthy. Um, this one is actually correct. I didn't do number 11, don't believe that answer, but number 10, I got it right. All right, that's all the air I have for you guys today. I do apologize. Um, I'm gonna try to get in and see my doctor today, but until then, <coughs> keep an eye out for uh, your email tomorrow morning. And uh, I, I get up at 6.30 to check on my kid to see if she's going to school. She's been home for two days this week. Uh, if she's not going to school, then I'm going to email you and let you know our status. I'll let you know either way. If I'm going to be there, I'll email you and tell you I'm going to be there. Uh, if I'm not going to, um, I, uh, I'll probably cancel it for the rest of the week. All right, so check out your email. Uh, I'll have that up before 8 
tomorrow. I'm going to end this video now so I can get it posted.